<laughs> Whitey. Yeah, give him. Where's for? Yeah, in the other end of the roof, talking to Mars. I will get him. Yeah, leave the love birds alone for a while. What's the rush? Look, I've been waiting seven years, Whitey. Paul and me have been waiting too, Gabo. Uh -huh. You wouldn't split that 50 grand until you got out. That was our agreement, remember? Yeah, sure. Cops grabbed you for the job. We held on to the dough until you got out. Mm -hmm. Well, we've been holding it. All right, where is it? Well, Paul cashed the dough in for bonds and hit him. Don't worry, they're safe. <laughs> So who worries? Well, the way you... I wonder where my girlfriend is. Now, she'll be here. Uh -huh. Oh, hey, here comes Marge, Paul's Marty, girlfriend. Where's Paul? Well, I thought he was with you. Well, he was until a couple of minutes ago. Maybe he went downstairs. Well, we've been standing here in front of the only exit. Look, boys, I left him just for a couple of minutes to go watch that plane. If he isn't up here, he must have walked down. Well, maybe he jumped. No. Well, he didn't walk down. I'm going to look down into the street. Where are you going, Whitey? Well, I'm going to look on this side of the building. He's not down here. Well, he's not here either. Hey, what goes on? I don't understand this. Paul isn't up here. There's no place for him to hide, and we looked down and couldn't see him. Well, so what? So it means he's disappeared into thin air. And now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friends. Now, look, Mary. Yeah? It doesn't intrigue me one bit. A guy just doesn't vanish from the roof of a building without some gimmick. But... Oh, there's somebody at the door. I'll call you later. Goodbye. Bye. I'm coming. Why, hello. Are you Boston Blackie? That's right. Come on in. Blackie, I, I want you to help me. Well, the way you look, no matter what you want, you can help yourself. Now, stop, Blackie, please. I'm... I'm in trouble. All right. My name is Marge Stanton. That your trouble? No, of course not. I, I want you to find Paul Martin. You mean the guy who disappeared from the roof of the Knickerbocker? That's right. Now, Blackie, please, I want you to find him. <laughs> now, look, baby, you don't expect me to fall for a stupid gimmick like a guy vanishing from a roof. Yeah, but... Things like that just don't happen. Well, this one did. Marge, if he was on the roof and he isn't there now, he dropped down. Haven't you ever heard of Sir Isaac Newton and his law of gravity? I don't care about laws, Blackie. Paul was in danger, and he knew it. Yeah, this is beginning to sound a little more interesting. Tell me some more. Well, Paul was holding on to $50,000 worth of bonds. Yeah. He gave me this envelope and told me to keep it in case anything happened to him. Well, what's in the envelope? I don't know. I haven't opened it yet. Well, go ahead and open it now. All right. Well, what is it? Well, it's just a paper with, with two words on it. Two words on it? Yeah. Pepper saw. Hmm. Yeah, uh, look, Marge, you wait here. I'm going to get my coat. You'll help me, Blackie. Certainly, I'm going to show you that this whole thing is a big elaborate joke. And while I'm at it, I'm going to find your boyfriend who doesn't seem to give a fig for Sir Isaac Newton. Now, you see, Blackie, yeah. I was standing over there watching an airplane when Paul disappeared from this room. Uh-huh. And where was Paul standing the last time you saw him? Over there, near the railing. Anybody else up here on the roof? Yes. Two of Paul's gangster friends, Whitey Whittaker and Gabo Conrad. Gabo yeah, Conrad? I thought he was doing a stretch for a payroll holdup. He did it. He was released two days ago. Mm. Well, what are we all doing up here? Well, we were up here getting some air, waiting for Terry Thompson. She's Gabo's girlfriend. Yeah. And then we were going to do the town. Now, you say Paul was standing right here... That's right. And Whitey and Gabo were standing over there near that door. <laughs> Come here, Annie. Huh? Look over the side of this railing. See that bird yeah. standing on a ledge a little way down there? Mm-hmm. There's how your boyfriend disappeared. I don't know what you mean. Paul had a rope looped around the stone ledge with both ends of the rope firmly anchored in the room below it. What? And no one was looking. He disappeared over the side onto the ledge and then slid into the room on the rope. Oh. Once in the room, he inside the rope pulled it in and walked away. But why would he do that? Uh, say, what was between you and Paul Martin? He wanted to marry me. And you? Well, I love him, Blackie, but I I just wouldn't admit it. I see. I told him I wouldn't marry him until he gave up those those friends of his, Whitey and Gabble. Marge, I got news for you. What? Paul wanted to disappear. 
What? He wanted you to worry about him. Oh. Now go on home and wait for him. He'll come back. You're going to oh. jump, Blackie. I'll hold your coat. Oh, hello, Faraday. What are you doing up on this roof? Looking for stool pigeons? I'd like to give you the bird. <laughs> Who's this? I'm Marge Stanton. Hello. Blackie just showed me how my boyfriend, Paul Martin, disappeared from this roof. Oh, he did, did he? Sure, it was simple. The guy framed a gimmick to disappear so that his girlfriend would worry about him. He did. Well, let me tell you, he really wanted to worry. Really? He found Paul Martin lying in a ditch with five bullet holes in him ten miles from here. Hey, Gabo, I want to go with you. I said no, Terry. When I pick up Whitey, you're getting out and scrambling back to the apartment. Oh. Only the two of us, Whitey and me, are going for those bonds. Now, shut up and stop arguing. Oh, nuts. I'm sorry, baby. I just don't want you to get hurt. I got great plans for us. Oh, Gabo. Now, just take it easy, baby. I'm dry. Save it for later, huh? Okay. Hey, you never told me what happened to Paul on that roof. Hmm? How'd you arrange it? Oh, I didn't. Huh? Yeah, it was all his big idea. I arranged what happened to him after. Oh. Well, I don't get the roof thing. Well, he wanted to make his snooty girlfriend worry about him, so he put the disappearing act. But how did he do it? Down a rope into a window on a top floor. Just to impress his dame, he disappears? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, okay, baby, there's Whitey on the corner. I see him. Now, you go back to the apartment and wait for me. As soon as we get our hands on the door, we're blowing town. Okay, Gabo. I'll be waiting. <laughs> Hey, Gabo, hmm? shine a flashlight over here. Okay, Whitey. Yeah, just like I thought. What? Yeah, these steps get down to the basement. Come on. Yeah, right with you. That's it. Uh, old man Pot sure built himself a big basement for his farmhouse. Yeah, Whitey. I'm glad I remembered Paul cracking about where the stuff is hidden. Yeah. Now there's just us two to split that 50 grand. Yeah, that Paul sure was a jerk. <laughs> yeah. Mad and luck trying to make an impression on a dame by slipping off the roof on a rope. <laughs> He went straight to the hideout, we find him, and then... <laughs> Goodbye, Paul. Yeah. It's easy to split 50 grand two ways. <laughs> Three ways, <laughs> you need an account. <laughs> That's pretty funny, Gav. Okay. <laughs> but it ain't finding us the bonds. Uh, yeah, shine your light around on the wall. Ah, no, they're too smooth. Uh, yeah. And the floor's made out of rocks. Could be under one of them. That figures. Sure. Yeah, but which one? Well, look for one without any cement around it. Yeah. Now, Whitey, look. That's our baby, Gabo. Sure. Put your flashlight down. Give me a hand. All right. Come on, Gabo. A little more. Push it. Come on. There it is. All right, click the flashlight. Shine it down here. It's there, all right. Yeah, a little box with $50,000. I've waited seven years for this. So did I, Gabo. Now, I don't want any partners, so I'm cutting you out with this gun of mine. Why, you dirty rat. Oh, oh. Blackie, Whitey, and Gabble must have killed Paul, but how do we find them? Well, the only clue Paul left is a slip of paper with those two words on it, pepper and salt. Yes. Did they mean anything to you? No, Blackie, but... But what? Well, it might be the hiding place of those bonds. Well, where did Paul get the bonds? Well, Paul and Whitey and Gabble were all in on a payroll robbery. Gabble was the one who was caught. I see. Paul had the money to hide, only he didn't want any hot cash, so he bought bonds in my name and hid them. And these two words could tell us where those bonds are hidden. Yes. Yeah. Pepper and salt, pepper and salt. Pepper dash, salt dash. Hmm? Yeah, in place of those dashes, I could put words. Now, let's see. Pepper, pot, salt, cellar. Pot cellar. Does that make any sense to you? Pot cellar? Pot? Pots. Pots. Blackie, Paul used to talk about the old pot's farm. That's it. The cellar of the old pot's farm. <laughs> Come on, honey. Let's call Faraday. Yes. We'll go down to that basement and maybe solve this case by an underground movement. <laughs> It's all right, Marge. It's perfectly all right. Faraday is here. Or uh, is that really why you're scared? Yeah, Blackie, you belong on the Potts farm. You're responsible for more corn than the state of Iowa. <laughs> Watch your step. We're going down the cellar. Blackie, stay close to me. It'll be a pleasure. 
Okay, mastermind. What do we do now? Something's buried here, and we have to find it. That's what we have to do. Uh, you couldn't manage for it uh, to be you. Inspector, yeah. will you shine your light over here? Hey, looks like somebody's already been here. Yes, the stone on the floor has been moved recently. Come on, Faraday, help me lift this rock. Okay, but I can hold my light, Miss Stanton. Yes, Inspector. Once more, Faraday. <laughs> Okay, Blackie, who's the body? That's Whitey Whitaker. Oh, fine. There was supposed to be bonds or something out here that would lead us to Paul Martin's killer. What do I find? A car. Take it easy, Faraday. All this means is that Gabo got here and killed Whitey. He has the bonds. Okay, then what are we waiting for? Let's get him. Sure, anything you say, but how do you find one guy with $50,000 worth of bonds in a city of a couple of million people? Now, back to Boston Blackie. Paul Martin disappears from the roof of the Knickerbocker building, only to turn up dead in a ditch miles from where he vanished. Paul had attempted the disappearing stunt to test the love of his girlfriend, Marge Stanton. But Gabo Conrad, an underworld friend who has just finished a seven-year term in prison, learns of the stunt and kills Paul and then kills other accomplice, Whitey Whitaker. As we return to our story, it is the next morning, and Blackie walks into Faraday. Oh, I come in, Blackie. I got news for you. You found Gabo in the barn, Barney? Not yet, but I'll buy your explanation for Paul Martin's disappearance from the roof. Now, isn't that nice? No. Is that why you sent for no, me? No, but one of my men found some rope in a room on the top floor of the Knickerbocker building. It's about time. Mm-hmm. The lab checked and discovered stone particles in the rope that matched the stone from the ledge. Well, that's one problem out of the way. I admit Now, it. what can't I do for you? Now, Mastermind, how would you go about finding Gabo Conrad? I don't know. He's probably out of the city by this time. No, Blackie, I've had every exit covered. This town is tighter than a drum. Where can he be? It seems to me that Gabo is in your hair. There's no room for the two of you there. <laughs> a couple of the boys are out checking a lead right now. Yeah. Yeah, a stool pigeon came through with the tip that Gabo has a girlfriend who's been waiting for him, a gal named Terry Thompson. That checks. Why? Marge told me that they were waiting for her up on the roof the day Paul Martin disappeared. Yeah, well, the boys are trying to find her. Good. Maybe if we find her, we find Gabo. And if you don't, you find yourself out of a job. Oh. Uh, Happy hunting, Inspector. I'm going to see Marge Stanton. Any special reason? Sure. Maybe between the two of us, we can dream up a way for you to nab Gabo. <laughs> Just a minute. Who is it? Good morning, Marge. It's Blackie. Oh, Blackie, wait a minute, will you? I've just been washing out something. Okay, I'm coming, Blackie. There. Hi, Marge. Hello. Come on in. Thank you. Have they found Gabo? Not yet, Marge, but Faraday's men are following a lead on Terry Thompson right now. Gabo's girlfriend? That's it. See, he must be with her. Know where she lives? No, Blackie, I don't. I, I never even met her. I hope they find Gabo. And the bonds. The bonds? Well, they're in your name. Marge, my girl, I just thought of something. What? After I make a phone call, those bonds are going to put Gabo Conrad in irons. <laughs> <laughs> 50,000 bucks worth of bonds. Yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. As soon as we cash them, we're on our way. Can't be too soon for me, Gabo. Just you and me, Terry, baby. Mm-hmm. Well, seven years I dreamt about this. Me too. I got so I thought I'd never see you. Yeah, it's a good thing Whitey was such a lousy shot or you wouldn't be here. Nah, forget Whitey, baby. I took care of him. But good. Yeah, come here, give me a kiss. Sure, Gabo. Hey. Huh? Hey, look outside. What? There's a patrol car stopping in front of the house. Come on, out the back, through the window. Well, the cops may be back here, too. Nah, those dumb cops think the only way out of here is through the front door. Come on, baby. Help me lift this window. Okay, Cap. Come on, baby. Step on it, cops. Don't stay stupid. Come on. I'll go first to catch you coming off. Hurry, Gabo. Hurry. I think I hear him coming down the hall. Take it easy, baby. We're doing fine. Just fine. Here I go. 
Okay, baby, jump. Here goes. Okay, let's go. Yeah. My car's around the corner. I'm with you. Only keep it home, Gabon. Don't worry, I ain't gonna be no target for tonight. Where's your car? Right over there. Oh, yeah, I see it. Come on, Terry, run. Okay, hold it. Yeah. So far, so good. We clear? Yeah, get in and start the motor. Well, where are you going? Never mind, get in and start the motor. Okay, okay. Gabo, hurry up. Yeah, in a minute. What are you doing in back of the car? Keep your eyes peeled for the car. I'm watching, but will you come up from behind the car? In a minute, I tell you. Be careful, here they come. Okay, the open the up, come Hurry up. All right, feel gas, baby. We're off. Yeah. They're, They're shooting at us. Well, they can't hit anything. Hey, what was that, Gabo? Took the mayor out of those fat cops. What are you talking about? You wanted to know what I was doing before back of the car? Yeah? I was spreading broken glass all over the road. Yeah. Sort of a sort of a welcome match. <laughs> <laughs> Just a minute. Uh, let me close this door so I can talk to you. Okay. Ah, that's better. Blackie, you're uh, working on Whitey Whittaker, aren't you? How'd you know? Anytime Faraday gets stuck, you're always around to unstuck him. Well, don't tell that to Faraday. He'd blow his top. <laughs> don't worry, I won't. What can I do for you? I'm giving you two stories. Two? Great. Well, one's a plan. Huh? But the other will be the story of the killer's capture. Okay, Blackie, count me in. What do you want me to do? I want you to run that plant story in your first edition. Shoot. I'll take it down over the phone. All right. The uh, Whitey Whitaker murder is tied to the killing of Paul Martin. He's the guy who disappeared on the roof. Got it. And one mug did both jobs. Uh huh. His name is Gabo. And your story is going to tell the tale. <laughs> You big lemmicks! Letting Gabo Conrad outsmart you. I ought to put you out trying to beat again. But, Inspector Faraday, I told you he threw glass all over the road. Yeah? Well, after he got out of the house, you should have followed. <laughs> Hello! If you yell at me louder, you won't need a phone. Uh, Blackie, what do you want? I'm in March Stanton's apartment, and I'm going to catch Gabo Conrad for you. Yeah, uh, thanks. We almost caught him ourselves. All right, mastermind, let's hear your idea. Well, uh,. When Paul Martin bought those bonds, he bought them for his girlfriend, Marge Stanton. They were made out to her, so, so she tells me. Those bonds are useless to Gabo unless he can get Marge to sign them. Mm. I suppose Gabo is going to walk right up to her front door and just ask her to sign on the dotted line. That's right, Faraday. Right. Gabo but... probably doesn't know about needing her signature. If he did, he'd been after Marge before this. But we're going to tell him. Yeah, how? I just called Chuck Reynolds of the Daily Express. He promised to run a front-page story on it in the first edition that should hit the stands in about three hours. Yeah. Then Gabo will come after Marge and we'll grab him. Blackie, this Gabo's a two-time killer. Now, I don't want you putting that girl's life in jeopardy. Hold it, Faraday. Gabo won't know about this for another three hours when the paper comes out. Right. By that time, you'll have posted a double guard around Marge Stan's apartment house so that the minute Gabo shows up, you take care of him for a showdown. Well, that sounds okay. Of course it's okay. It'll work. I'll come down and talk to you about it. Okay, Blackie, so long. Well, Marge, we're all set. Blackie, are you sure it will work? Absolutely sure. Huh. Gabo, if and when he sees the story, can't possibly be around for another three hours. Yes. Now, can I leave you alone for a while? Well, where are you going? Down to Faraday's office to check the protection that he's going to throw around this building. But how long will you be gone? About an hour, not more. Oh, no. Now, don't worry. When Gabo comes up to get you to sign over those bonds, we'll take him over the coals. Slow down, Gabo. We're coming to the airport. Okay, Terry, relax. Look, I can't wait until we get out of this town, but I want to make it in one piece. Don't worry, baby, we will. I've got a private plane shot. Relax, will you? Sure. Turn on the radio. Okay. Yeah, that sounds nice. Just listen to it. Stop worrying, huh? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program to bring you an exclusive bullet from the city room of the Daily Express. The fifty thousand dollars in bonds stolen hey. by the killer of Paul Martin and Whitey Whitaker are no good to the thief unless they're endorsed by Marjorie Stanton, ex-girlfriend of Martin. 
What? Read the complete story in the express. On the street in three hours. Hey, Gabo. Shut up. We're going to get Marge. <laughs> but radio is a great invention. Well, it's a good thing you had the car radio going, Gabo. Yeah, Terry, that news flash was a lucky break, all right? Papers wouldn't have it for another couple of hours. What'd you say Marge's apartment was? Apartment 4C. Oh. Yeah, this looks like it. You sure? Yeah, wait a minute. There's a name over the door, pal. Who is it? Marjorie Stanton. Yep, oh. this is it. Okay. Who is it? She knows my voice. You answer it. What'll I say? Who's there? I don't know. Say something. Miss Stanton? Uh, yes? I got a package for you. Oh, all right. And I'm the pack. Yes, Hello. Right. Yes, well, you're not going Grab to... Grab it, Make it for the window. Well, like all me. Let go of me. Okay, baby, sit down. Keep an eye on her while I look around the apartment. She makes a move, I'll crown her with this lamp. What do you want? Relax, stupid. We're not going to hurt you much. You're Terry, aren't you? Yeah. I thought so. You're the babe who thought she was too good for Paul. Let go. Well, Gabble? Clean as a whistle. Well. I'll be here. Now, let's get down to business, huh? Here are the bonds, Gabble. And I've got the fountain pen. Good. Okay, Marge, sign on the dotted line. I told you about that. You weren't supposed to know. Well, uh, you see, Marge, it's like this. We're riding along in our limousine, see, enjoying the sights. I'm planning our future. Yeah, yeah. And listening to some lovely type music over the radio, when suddenly some fat announcer says, Ladies and gentlemen, we enter this program to bring you an exclusive bulletin from the city room of the Daily Express. Ain't that the way you started, Terry? <laughs> yeah, but you say it much better, Gabo. Oh, thanks. Well, uh, then he says, the bond for which Gabo Conrad, that's me, see, <laughs> has already committed two murders. They ain't no good without your signature. So we came here to get it. So, uh, Marge, sign your name on the dotted line. No. <laughs> Marge, I got no time to fool. Now sign your name here. She's not signing her thing until she sees the lawyer. Hey, Blackie, you came back. Look how Gabo's got a gun. Blackie. Won't get a chance to use it. Hey, yeah. I'm getting out of here. Oh, no, you're you? not. You're sitting right here. <laughs> Good going, Marge. Now I'll finish off this lad. Blackie, oh. here. Well, that's that. Two down and none to go. Blackie, how'd you get here so fast? I thought you wouldn't be back for another hour. Well, I heard the bulletin over my car radio and oh. realized that Gabble might be the same thing. That's right. So, back I came without seeing Faraday. Oh. Say, I think I'd better call him now. He ought to be informed that he just caught a killer, don't you think? 